Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spear, and today we will be reading some excerpts from Professor Arnold Eretz Mucus's Diet Healing System, annotated, revised, and edited by Professor Spira. We are going to look at Lesson 22, Destructive Diet of Civilization and the Mucusless Diet, the Natural Food of Humans. You have now learned that total abstinence from food, or fasting, is the best and most effective method of healing. This proves with logical consequence how only a small quantity is in fact necessary to sustain life and it justifies my oft repeated statement. The wonder is that we live in spite of our excessive eating, in spite of our eating such wrong destructive foods. In the light of this truth, it almost appears ridiculous to note the endless fight and confusion regarding dietetics, protein, mineral salts, vitamins, etc. The potential food value is not the first question at all. You cannot heal drunkenness by water without stopping the intake of alcohol. You cannot heal disease through on any kind of adjustment treatments or diets without stopping the eating of the foods which produced disease, the latter being 90% of the present day destructive diet of civilization. What a great paragraph. This is, I love this. This is, I mean, this is lay, starting to lay out the, this philosophy, this approach, this ph uh, your philosophy of life, dietetic philosophy, uh, way to think about the world that's to me one of the most profound things about Arnold Air and Mucus Diet Healing System is there is a uh, a revolution of thought you, you see the world differently not only when you, if you when you start to transform yourself physiologically but looking at things a little differently just reading the text and you say oh okay I see it's, it's just a different way to look at it and this is Another one of the places where he is emphasizing his opinion. This is his opinion on how uh, it's not the, the 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 how it is not important to overly obsess about these quantities of things and the in these calculations and well I, I need so much of this or let me. How many calories you get, you know, all these kind of things. Eret is essentially uh, uh, encouraging you to let go of some of the, these kind of things that, that's holding you back. Like you said, you, you can't cure drunkenness by just drinking a bunch of water. You know, you have, first you have to stop drinking alcohol and your body needs time to go through a detoxification process to get back in order back in line uh, and as with mucus's diet healing system is a detoxification process it's take and you are drunk most of us were when you started mucus diet you're drunk on mucus forming food and you don't realize that type that you are drunk that there's a change in consciousness is profound that ha happens when you the further away you get from mucus forming foods uh, and so this is the same principle of overcoming drunkenness, curing your drunkenness, mucus drunkenness. And the only way to get that started is you stop the intake of, uh, of, of the quantity and quality of mucus forming foods, pus forming foods that you are, uh, that you're eating. I name the natural food of humans, fruits, and starchless green leafy vegetables, as it is said in Genesis, fruits and herbs. Uh, mucusless diet, because mucus is the main and important and significant substance, while the other uh, wrong foods contain, produce, and encumber the human body with the matter of disease. Now, this paragraph is the basis on which I make the argument that the that mucus free is the original vegan diet. Mucus's diet healing system, there's elements of the healing system that are not 100% vegan, but by definition, mucus free or a mucusless diet 
is 100% plant-based, is raw, and it is one of the, the uh, uh, in, in to, according to Eric, and in my opinion, it's the highest level, one of the highest levels we can get to in terms of dietetics. But we also got the healing system. And so this is something that I think, you know, confuses a lot of people. And I hope, I, can, I don't know if this has made it even more confusing, but let, let me read that paragraph again. We'll kind of clarify all this. Uh, I named the natural food of humans, fruits and starches, green leafy vegetables, uh, or fruits and herbs, mucus's diet, because mucus is the main and important and significant substance while the other wrong foods contain uh, produce and encumber the human body with the with the material of disease and so Eric reasons that okay the only foods that do not create human illness fundamentally are fruits and green leafy vegetables so that is what you are transitioning to and, and like I said in the previous video I mean, if, if you can transition to fruits and just nothing but raw fruits and raw green leafy vegetables, with no other vegetables, nothing else, just fruits, raw green leafy vegetables. If you can do that in two or three years, I'm, I'm going to go where you're at and give you a big hug. I'm going to shake your hand and I'm going to say that you're my hero. Uh, but at present, I don't know anybody that's done that or, 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 and I'm not sure if that is... Uh, you know, can be done. I mean, that'd be a physiological genius. It, maybe. What 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 people have done is done things like that, but then couldn't sustain it for very long. So they would eat, try to eat nothing but fruit or or, or a real strict mucus free diet. With you know, with uh, in the, within their first ten years of practicing the diet, much less just their first three years, and because of how good they felt for a while they would try to sustain that for a long period of time and it might be great for a while then all of a sudden they hit a bump and before you know it they're talking about well I'm eating paleo now and you know I'm getting my my, my farm fresh f eggs and um, and I've seen it and there's been a number of people that uh, recently you know I've, I've seen done that and the main thing that I see they all have in common is in most cases uh, there's a lack of transition uh, and oftentimes they tried to add on other dogmas from other system and uh, well there's not a lot of systems but from other diets you know if it was where they were trying to impose that on a mucusless diet so if they were trying to bring a raw food thing over and force that into mucusless diet that means that there's a whole lot of stuff in this book that they're going to be unable to to use and to benefit from and so that that is a uh, that's that's an issue but in terms of I you know I can't tell you how long it'll take and I don't know how long it'll take for me to transition to nothing but fruits and green leafy vegetables I mean, as a goal of mine uh, but that doesn't have to be a goal for everybody because not everybody wants to practice a mucus diet healing system as a lifestyle some people just want to heal themselves of an ailment or illness that they're working with that they have today and they'll do that and then they'll go back to eating hopefully you know an improved version of their former diet but that's very common and I don't begrudge those people or uh, uh, anything or speak negatively about or judge them or anything I mean that's that's just what has happened for almost a hundred years and that's what will continue to happen that's what happened to uh, folks that have worked with Dr. Morris and healed themselves or worked with whoever I name, that's just, that, that just happens. Um, what is happening more and more though is there are people that are ta really seriously taking a look at mucus diet as a lifestyle. And my main recommendation is to take it slow. Don't be, try to be hard on yourself. Don't try to overexert or push yourself or force yourself to try to do some kind of long fast or anything uh just go go by the book if you if you don't if you don't trust me and and, and you don't want my book 
Uh, you got the 1994 version, which has been changed quite a bit from the 1924 version. So if you really want Eric's original, close to his original words as possible, Fred Hurst still added stuff to this one. But if you want as close to Eric, you got to go back to that, that 1924 version. But, uh, and I'm saying that, that j just <laughs> as a side note, every once in a while I get a little criticism or somebody will uh, want to want to say something, which which is fine. You know, I take the criticism, but, but that's my answer. It's like, I mean, you don't have to read this, read this. Uh, if you can find a copy of this, <laughs> they're not readily available all that all that easy. But uh, I don't care what you read, just mucus is diet healing system. But all I've tried to do is create a, a dialogue uh, with and, and address uh, co very common questions that I've just heard over the years of uh, people coming to me asking questions or, or me trying to help people practice a mucus diet. Uh, There's just certain things that totally were confusing to people and I've said, well, if, if the Bible can have an annotated version, this is annotated. This is a, it's a bag of Gita. Uh, that, that that's that's an annotated version and in, in, in it has the original text but it also has uh, the uh, uh, commentary uh, by by the Swami there and I even have I don't think this Bible's not annotated but it's got different it, it's got notes in there and, and a whole big sections that analyze different parts of the text and Actually, this might be. There are there are some notes in it. It, it has like little footnotes and end notes on it. So, it's, it's a, so I'm just just to say it is a, a common thing with important books. Uh, most I would say most important books of antiquity have an annotated version where some scholar has come along and uh, and 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 did had some kind of dialogue with the text and did some extra analysis so i thought that Eric's work if anybody's work was deserving of some additional anal analysis and clarity uh i thought Eric's was a great candidate for that because uh, you know people don't put their time and energy into annotating books that aren't uh, that they don't feel are really important and so uh, so that that's kind of a side note, almost a, a little mini rant, if you will. But I, I appreciate the uh, uh, you indulging me, and I appreciate when uh, and I do appreciate you when people have little criticism. I would prefer people tell me directly uh, as opposed to um, uh, you know saying it all over a place where they don't think I can see it. But uh, anyway. I digress and uh, uh, the entire trash ooh this is getting mmm the entire trash of scientific dietetics food values statistics etc is useless and in vain so long as the first step is not taken and that is to see the foods and their value from a principally different angle how far and how much it produces and leaves disease matter mucus in the body can i get an amen they're dissolving eliminating healing properties hallelujah have you seen the light yes i have seen the light <laughs> For this purpose, I give you a special critique of the different foods, wrong foods especially, and you can see at once why they are destructive with no positive food value at all, but producing and leaving stored up waste in the body. Well, okay, what we'll do, we'll pause because this video is getting a little bit lengthy. We will pause and in the next video we will continue on with this lesson and we will talk about the destructive, the nasty, the putrescent, 
the stanky <laughs> pus and mucus forming foods. So I thank you as always for tuning in and uh, if you got some questions or comments or you just want to say something nice to me, I always appreciate it and I will uh, try to say something nice back to you. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, seriously, if you got questions or something, you know, I try to address what I can. Sometimes I get a little wrapped up in other social media f places, but it is um, uh, it's important to me. Uh, and if you ever ask a question you really want, but you post it someplace and I don't necessarily get right to you, post it somewhere else. And eventually, you know, I'm not ignoring you. It's just, I got a lot, a lot of social media things out there. And sometimes it is hard to find the time to get around to everything. So I do my best. Uh, so I thank you for your patience with that kind of thing. But uh, so... Until next time, peace, love, and breath. Uh, the entire trash. Ooh, this is getting... Mm.